A very good morning to all my dear friends. I hope you all are doing good. This is Prashant Mamani. Dear friends, uh, this is the quote of the day. You are your own limit. Now, of course, uh, I don't want you guys to take this quote as it is. Uh, I would really appreciate if you can think about it, whether this quote is right or wrong. And also do think about the time when you have crossed your limits, right? Whatever you have, uh, I'm talking about positive boundaries, right? That you have uh, crossed and entered into a new uh, zone and uh, i do believe uh, that uh, whenever we breach our limit or limits uh, we enter into a new zone and of course uh, it gives us a sort of enriching feeling isn't it uh, with this uh, dear friends uh, today is the last date for up to 40 percent discount that is available on our pen drive and tablet courses so if you haven't got our pen drive and tablet courses yet i would recommend all of you to get it as soon as possible check out studyiq.com if you want to know more about it with this dear friends uh, let's start with the one of the most important article that we have in today's hindu let me tell you that today we have many articles to discuss about so i will be a bit quick in the news section of course i have taken all important news and i do believe that it is uh, it is uh, very easy for uh, you guys to go through the news it is only this editorials and uh, articles uh, that are a uh, bit uh, difficult to comprehend uh, but uh, of course we do discuss it on regular basis we analyze it in fact we are not dictating or translating things that are uh, given in the hindu we are of course adding value to it on regular basis and that's how uh, your capacity builds isn't it so i will be a bit quick with the news uh, items uh, uh, so let's uh, start this one it is about uh, recent uh, disqualification of two members of uh, janta dal united and now chairman of rajya sabha and i remember one more thing that i would like to tell you here is that vice president once you get elected as vice president you automatically become the chairman of Rajya Sabha, right? So here you find Vyanka and Naidu playing uh, two roles, one as a vice president and as the chairman of Rajya Sabha. So he has uh, disqualified two dissident, right? Dissident members, the members that mean, uh, the dissident basically means that uh, you are in Janta Dal or any other party and uh, you are doing something uh, that is against the party so you can be disqualified of course uh, this is a basic definition we will go through the rules as well so the question is uh, the decision that is taken by the chairman whether without referring it to the committee of privileges right whether it is a hasty decision or a case of a speedy justice let's uh, see what the writer has to say about it now as per the rules uh, a member of uh, parliament or the state legislature right it applies to both member of parliament as well as a state legislature keep this thing in mind now uh, they are disqualified if right if they voluntarily give up their membership to the party so say for example if you are in janta dal or say congress or bjp whatever right xyz party you are in and now you think that uh, uh, you for whatever reason you don't want to be in this party or you don't want to be in politics altogether so you will submit your resignation uh, right uh, to this xyz party as soon as your resignation is accepted your seat in parliament or state legislature if you are an mla or mp you will automatically uh, be disqualified from the house the second thing is that many a times uh, the party issues whip now what whip is whip basically means the party requires you to be present in the house for some very serious uh, voting or for uh, some other matter so whenever this sort of whips are issued if you are absent if you don't take part without informing the party uh, then uh, you can be disqualified uh, if you vote against uh, the party's stand then as well you can be disqualified now the question is that many times we find uh, that uh, the party is taking a wrong stand then what we can do about it remember it is about majority and minority that's how the parliament works and that's how the party works as well it's not necessary that all the time um, one person's view is right uh, it is also uh, it is other way around as well many a times you have one single person who is right but uh, you have to go with uh, the school of fishes isn't it you have to go with your 
party people because uh, of uh, that party because of that organization you have got elected to this house and uh, this present case uh, of uh, anti-party activities it all started with uh, this uh, two members that took part uh, in a sort of uh, rally or something right uh, they took part um, in uh, this Janta Dal United's uh, uh, opposition or you can say their rival party and this is the reason why uh, this Rajya Sabha chairman has decided to um, disqualify them of course uh, it was uh, the Janta Dal who said that they should be disqualified uh, these two people so uh, this is a good stand by no doubt our vice president because uh, everything has been sorted out within three months now if you go back in the past as well then you find that most of the decisions uh, pertaining to this thing are always taken by the leader of the house or you can say the the chairman of uh, Rajya Sabha or the speaker of Lok Sabha and uh, it it is up to them if they want uh, this particular case or any case uh, to go to this uh, uh, committee of privileges right and uh, uh, one more thing that i would like to highlight here is that uh, you know the case of uh, aia dmk regarding party symbol that two leaf uh, symbol the same thing happened with the uh, jdu as well the election commission of india remember it is uh, eci that will um, give a green signal uh, whether this uh, lotus belongs to bjp or whether this uh, two leaves uh, belong to this aia dmk or um, this uh, palm belongs to uh, this uh, congress party right so you have to get approval from this thing and if just in case if there is any sort of say for example uh, tomorrow morning uh, five members of uh, congress may step out of congress and they may claim or they may claim that uh, this uh, this palm symbol belongs to them so in this way you cannot run a political party you can understand uh, it very well that uh, Again, it is about uh, uh, getting into power, isn't it? So you find uh, all this sort of uh, tricks uh, being executed or being uh, implemented by many people for uh, for grabbing power. Anyways, uh, Mr. Naidu has made it clear that dissent, right? Uh, if you don't agree with something, that is your political right. That that it, it, there is no doubt about it. Uh, you can have. Uh, you can. Uh, it is not always necessary that you agree with everything that has been said by your leader but uh, you should not engage in any sort of activities that can disrupt the roots of democracy or, or you can say the democratic system party-based democratic system and uh, as per this uh, rule 7-3 of the members of Rajya Sabha uh, a chairman gives a uh, seven days time to the person against whom this uh, thing is going on and uh, within seven days the person has to get back to the chairman in this case uh, both this uh, gentleman they decided not to get back to them uh, to to uh, to the Rajya Sabha or to the chairman and uh, this is a clear sign of uh, violation of uh, rules of uh, Rajya Sabha and this is one of the reason that uh, Naidu ji has decided to uh, to disqualify them and uh, as far as this case is concerned uh, it is clear that the spirit of uh, democracy is been upheld by the chairman of the Rajya Sabha and it is a lesson for other people as well other speakers of uh, lok of uh, speaker of lok sabha as well as speaker of uh, legislative assemblies uh, that uh, they should uh, take uh, uh, they should learn uh, the lesson uh, from this uh, rajya sabha chairman that he has sorted out everything within 3 months time uh, because in the past if you go back you find that uh, the cases pertaining to this thing keeps on going on for years and years so he has sorted out everything in a very short period of time ensuring that uh, the quality of justice is not compromised with with this uh, we enter into uh, an editorial this is about adultery right uh, now uh, adultery falls under the section of ipc uh, right uh, section 497 of indian penal code and uh, for the very long time uh, this thing was uh, seeking uh, a sort of uh, relook reconsideration uh, because uh, uh, if you go back uh, to the justice of supreme court in the past then we find that uh, supreme court has uh, as uh, you can say defined woman uh, when uh, when it comes to this adultery case right uh, if you don't know what adultery is all about then let me tell you here is a, a is a husband b is a wife and c is a man 
right and uh, b and c are having affair uh, so this scenario is called adultery when a uh, in this case in this editorial it is uh, predominantly talking about uh, a lady a married lady having affair with a man so here in the past the supreme court said that woman is a victim and it defined man as the author of the crime so you can clearly see here that see when ever any per, any two individuals if they are having affair then it is not about one person right both of them are involved in this thing and uh, if we go through the article if we if we see this uh, section 497 of indian penal court then we can clearly say that uh, it is against man and this uh, stand of supreme court is against man as well and uh, this protection or this victim and tag was given by the supreme court uh, under article 153 uh, that is a special provision that has protection uh, uh, that has the protection gave woman exemption right uh, they do get exemption under this article 153 of uh, constitution now the thing is um, if you go through criminal law right then criminal law proceeds uh, on the concept of gender neutrality that means uh, if a murder is conducted by a lady she will attract uh, the same uh, punishment uh, if, if in in the context of if a, if a man has uh, committed a murder right uh, it depends on the severity and of course it depends on uh, the the discretion of judge but uh, the rules are equal when it comes to criminal laws rules are equally applied uh, to both genders or you can say all the genders right uh, men women and third gender now the court has also noted that uh, once the consent or convenience of a husband is given uh, then there is no offense of adultery at all that this also means as uh, supreme court says that uh, say for example if the man if the husband says it's fine uh, for his wife to have affair with someone then uh, there will be no case at all this has uh, this indicates that uh, it is taken as that a woman is uh, a property of a husband isn't it and the second thing that i would like to add here is that uh, many a times right uh, for taking a sort of revenge as well uh, who knows right a verbal uh, acceptance of a man uh, you will never find a sort of written thing practically speaking isn't it a husband will never write down in a stamp paper that uh, he is fine if uh, his wife is having affair with a third party but uh, he may give a sort of verbal okay and later on um, the things can be turned against them isn't it the other thing is that uh, in today's era see the way things have changed uh, this all penal code and the section force 97 everything was introduced in india during time of uh, british raj and uh, at that point of time you know this thing was a very taboo topic uh, it's not that uh, this sort of things uh, were not taking place in our country uh, and uh, uh, it's not that uh, in today's era this is what uh, we find that's not right as well it depends right it depends uh, at the end of the day we are dealing with human beings uh, so everyone has their own problems and issues and uh, they find happiness in different things so we cannot comment on those things uh, as far as we are not involved in this thing so we cannot really comment on this thing but as a member of society we can uh, clearly see that uh, it, it it is a matter between uh, two parties right and uh, many times uh, this uh, things uh, can be this sort of uh, laws can be used against uh, uh, two people and now imagine a scenario where a man is uh, a man and a woman right they are their marriage is uh, socially broken right they are not living together but legally they are husband and wife and it is quite natural uh, that this man will find another woman and this uh, woman will find another man right uh, there is no nothing wrong with that as well but here the case applies only to this party right at the end of the day it is this person who will uh, suffer from this relationship so this uh, things should be changed and the uh, united nation has also said in 2012 that countries having this sort of laws should get rid of uh, this laws and um, 
again uh, it is a matter of uh, human emotions and human relationships it is a civil thing and it should not fall within a uh, criminal uh, laws so that's everything regarding it uh, it is about isis uh, this one now uh, here is a map it is not uh, up to date means it is not a map of december 2017 it is of april uh, 2017 but uh, things have not changed uh, that much uh, a little bit of uh, variation is here but uh, for you guys it is uh, just a sort of highlight or a rough idea of uh, how things used to be uh, in uh, this part of this is by the way Iraq I'm, I'm sure you have figured it out uh, it is written here so the yellow bit uh, represents uh, Kurdish forces uh, now there is a special video lecture available on uh, our study IQ channel uh, so if you want to know more about what Kurdish uh, referendum and Kurdish people are all about then do check it out available both in Hindi and English I have delivered it a couple of months ago then you have uh, this red portion here that is uh, controlled by Iraqi government and then you have this black portion that is covered by ISIS or IS right now the thing is uh, earlier on if you go back a little bit back in time 2014 2015 then we find that a huge uh, portion or a large portion was covered by this terrorist group uh, IS and I'm sure we all know how uh, IS was one of the biggest threat it was uh, when it uh, was in its inception period right it was uh, one of the most dreadful group uh, we have ever seen in recent past now Iraqi Prime Minister has claimed that uh, IS is destroyed from Iraq uh, this is a big claim and no doubt and uh, the reason why he is claiming it is because uh, uh, the last part of uh, Iraq uh, that is Mosul Mosul is a very famous uh, city and uh, it has a historical connection with India as well uh, you might have heard about a term called Muslim right it is a it is a type of cloth uh, so it got its name it is basically from India but it got its name from Mosul anyways uh, so Mosul is a very famous city historic city right uh, and uh, the second largest in Iraq and uh, it was controlled by this uh, ISIS group and in 2014 September 2014 uh, USA Iran and Mr. Abadi when Abadi took over as the Prime Minister they started uh, working with each other and they started uh, taking on uh, on IS uh, I I ISIS and I've uh, uh, you know many a times we've uh, hear these things that there is always something good in something bad and here is something good in something bad of course ISIS is bad side but the good point is that you find United States and Iran right arch rivals working with each other uh, when it comes to fighting ISIS so this is a uh, this is a, you can say a positive outcome of ISIS of course we don't want ISIS anymore uh, the other thing is that uh, dear friends uh, you find this uh, Shia militants and Kurdish Peshmerga right uh, this Kurdish people's uh, army they are known as Kurdish Peshmerga uh, many times you find questions like uh, Kurds belong to uh, which particular country of course uh, this Kurdish people they live in many different parts uh, so uh, but you never know they can ask you a question on this thing as well they may ask you Syria or they may th uh, throw of course you won't find Syria and I Iraq together uh, so keep this thing in mind predominantly they are uh, in Iraq and uh, you find here that uh, Kurdish Peshmerga USA and uh, Shia militants uh, and of course the Iraqi army all together they are they have been fighting this uh, ISIS and later on Russia and America again arch rivals uh, they together started bombing uh, this uh, ISIS uh, place and Kurdish forces were uh, handling the ground these uh, forces this uh, powerful America and Russia they were providing air support and things like that and now the thing is uh, you have uh, different fragments in Iraq and uh, the thing is uh, if we go back to the history of Al-Qaeda then we see that uh, back in 2006 and 2007 it was in the similar position uh, where ISIS is today it was about to end but due to this internal conflict uh, within the countries in which uh, they are operating uh, they got uh, a sort of breeding ground and uh, because of internal fragmentation and things like that 
it uh, was uh, relaunched or you, you can say regrouped and reinvented as ISIS. So Al Qaeda basically that you can say um, version 2.0 of uh, Al Qaeda is ISIS. So we don't want 3.0 of ISIS. And so for that, uh, all these parties have to ensure that they stick with each other at least when it comes to fighting terrorism the other thing this one is about um, tata nano it's not about tata nano but it starts with a story of tata nano and then it uh, talks about the business environment now i'm sure you know about tata nano story right to have it all started and at present we know the scenario that uh, tata nano is not that famous car uh, anymore in fact it is uh, not the first car uh, it was supposed to be the first car of a family who uh, who uh, who have a two wheeler and if they want to upgrade themselves if you want to say it an upgrade uh, then uh, tata nano was it was meant to be at uh, the first car of a family now uh, it has uh, means it's not in demand anymore and uh, the production is down uh, down to two cars a day so clearly it is uh, not working well and we know how it all started uh, how one day Ratan Tata was uh, traveling and uh, he spotted a sort of road accident in which a family of four or five uh, they were traveling on a bike so he decided uh, to come out with a safety bike then he said that uh, let's bring a car and uh, he presented this introduced this car in 2008's uh, Auto Expo and um, later on uh, it was decided that uh, it will be launched as a one lakh rupee car and things like that but anyways it is not working anymore hopefully in near future we may see an electronic version it may pick up you never know but it is about comment on disruption what uh, Ratan Tata was trying to do he was trying to disrupt the market not in a negative way disruption means uh, that uh, when you do things when things are becoming uh, when they become too normal right uh, when we start taking it for granted when no innovation is there at all and everything is old and outdated at that point of time we find someone comes in and disrupts the whole market they bring something new and this will create a new create a new hype and uh, one more example that i can think about is of uh, geo phones or geo network right you know that uh, for the one year or something they provided free card service or something and uh, data was free and uh, calling was free something like that and because of this thing uh, today there are many companies uh, right uh, they are not making any profit and in fact uh, they have they are forced to bring down their cost now we see other expensive companies are also uh, trying to match the price of geo and things like that so this is a sort of example of disruption i hope this is clear now uh, the thing is uh, not every disruption is guaranteed to succeed isn't it uh, tata nano is a very good example here the other thing is that not all pain begets gains uh, it's not necessary that if you are working too hard then you will succeed particularly in the market and uh, when it comes to education let me tell you that uh, the more pain you take the more gain you will get uh, i'm not diverse diversifying from any this uh, topic here right uh, but i would like to add here many times uh, if uh, this sort of things are not clear then students may uh, i i have observed that uh, it will be taken in a wrong manner so in business in politics in other areas right uh, it is not necessary that uh, your hard work will always produce result but when it comes to education as far as my personal opinion is concerned right uh, it will never let you down because uh, you may fail here right but this failure will lead to your higher success keep this thing in mind now let's uh, get back to this topic here so even successful products must bow down bow out uh, when uh, better ones come alone we know this thing but uh, what is the message of this article is that uh, we know have uh, concessions were provided to this tata nano car plant in gujarat and uh, uh, when this car was uh, in its inception form it was uh, considered india was uh, considered as an emerging economic province right as a, as a superpower a, a rising power 
But at present, uh, if we see, then it is a sort of uh, license Raj situation that is going on at present. The other thing is, it is talking about discretion-driven system that uh, state governments uh, may decide by themselves uh, whether to give this, uh, uh, say, some sort of concession to Tata and not give concession to other companies and things like that. In this way, uh, the good thing is that in initial period you would be you will be able to attract some businesses, but uh, if you have uh, different rules or if you have a differential system for different business businesses and businessmen, then uh, eventually you will lose your grip uh, from this uh, law based uh, law based uh, you can say uh, scenario or law based. Uh, business environment and every one of us right uh, even if uh, just imagine yourself as a company foreign company uh, trying to invest in india you would like love to follow rules and regulation isn't it if things are clear to you then it will give you more time to plan your business model and things like that but if you know that uh, rules are tweaked and twisted uh, for providing some sort of support to some particular companies then uh, this will keep uh, investment away from india so this is a thing that uh, the politicians or you can say the parties in power should learn uh, this one is about two metro projects uh, one a very successful model the other is a bit of a struggling one now uh, the successful one is this Hyderabad metro rail project uh, it has not started yet uh, it was in November 20, 28 November when PM uh, inaugurated its uh, one of the line right construction line it is uh, predominantly PPP based on PPP model that is public private partnership model and uh, the credit goes to YS Raj Sekhar Reddy uh, was uh, the then chief minister of Andhra Pradesh uh, who pushed for an innovative PPP approach. Now uh, here uh, the thing is uh, why this thing became successful because all the rules and regulation or you can say this contractual obligations were clear and it was uh, clearly stated that if uh, uh, things are delayed by say for example government or uh, this private player uh, then they will born uh, or they will uh, bear all the uh, cost uh, that is uh, all, all the cost uh, that goes up because of the delay in project and uh, here you have another scenario of this uh, Delhi metro line uh, where uh, Reliance infrastructure terminated the project uh, they have stepped out of it and uh, they have in fact got uh, uh, they have claimed money from uh, DMRC uh, uh, for uh, for not following this uh, rules and regulation and things like that so what we need here is we need model concession agreement uh, model concession agreement is uh, basically rules and regulations uh, that are defined or you can say the mous or uh, the things that we have agreed under this ppp both the parties uh, private and uh, government and it is something like software right uh, you know that a successful or a good software uh, will define the success of a satellite in the same way if uh, mca are crystal clear if uh, things are uh, given clearly in it then uh, the chances are and if both the parties are trying the level best to uh, to walk the talk uh, then uh, uh, it's not that difficult to complete the projects and uh, this uh, thing uh, this uh, incident of this PPP model of this Hyderabad Metro Rail project is a sort of learning curve or sort of example for uh, infrastructure investment uh, um, hungry country like us right uh, we can follow this best practices and in this way we would be able to attract more investment in, in, in infrastructure which creates huge amount of jobs as well this one is about the facts do not matter right uh, it, it 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 is quoting some books uh, and uh, very you can say inspiring or you can say very educative um, ideas and uh, let's quickly go through it as uh, we are uh, running out of time here so the key difference between liar and a bullshitter right the liar knows the truth and aims to deceive a person who is knowing what the truth is but then as well that person is not speaking the truth or telling the truth that is a liar but a bullshitter right on the other hand doesn't care about the truth he can do anything he can speak he or she can speak anything they like or say anything they like and here it uh, 
talks about this thing called confirmation bias right the confirmation bias is a thing think about this thing as well seriously think about it what happens is that we listen what we want to listen uh, this is a fact right uh, we listen only those things uh, that we would love to listen we ignore all those facts and accept only those that confirm to our worldview and this is one of our own limit right uh, once we identify this thing and once we start working on this thing then we will realize that uh, many of the things uh, the things that we read the things that we hear speak many of the things are everything is based on our all the things that we like and don't like if we don't like something then we will clearly ignore it whether that is right or wrong and here a lipman is uh, referring a lipman and uh, lipman sees this as a challenge for democracy because what happens is that uh, say for example a political party or a political person is saying a thing uh, things falling under category a are right and if your view is yes that is right uh, then even if b is wrong uh, sorry b is right uh, in real terms and uh, then as well uh, people will go for it and in this way you can imagine that uh, democracy will not uh, survive and here there are many examples there are many this sort of uh, impulsive stories around beliefs like 911 was created by jews and hindu nation uh, or you know, india is a hindu nation and things like that and uh, we also have this uh, thing called preference uh, falsification A preference falsification means we have our own views and we feel about something in a certain way but we don't have that courage to speak out because we are we are not being backed up by a majority or we are not being backed up by that many people but as soon as uh, we find a sort of platform in which people who share similar beliefs uh, we find them then we start speaking all of the sudden we will have courage to express ourselves and this is called a preference cascade and that's what is happening uh, when we see this right wing populist everywhere you know it started with america and then uh, um, you get this brexit and we also saw during this uh, french election before that in netherlands election and uh, it was also seen in uh, of course it is visible in our country as well and uh, there are other examples in, in in europe and other parts of the world too when we talk about this rise of right wing populists everywhere so this is the thing and uh, it is uh, the duty of all the liberals uh, who are the liberals are right liberal elites uh, they used to they used to run the media earlier on but nowadays we know the media is fragmented as well uh, you have uh, some channels that are supporting some newspapers and some channels they are supporting this right wing ideology and uh, they are or they can uh, they can uh, you can say expand this preference cascade and this is uh, going to make our democracy a bit more ugly with this uh, this particular topic you can interrelate this thing uh, with uh, this one this one is about uh, social media the way things are changing in social media and uh, here again you can see that a politically engaged community is the basic requirement for a vibrant democracy if you are living in a country and if you are not interested in politics at all if you don't know what things are going on i'm not saying that you should join a political party but at least uh, you should observe and think and uh, you should also form a view if no, if you don't form a view that's not a crime at all but uh, at least you should observe like what is going on because uh, politics is a thing that will have impact on each and everything that we do right so it is uh, very important particularly for the youngsters to to observe the things that are going on to be politically active i mean to say right uh, in the mind at least so if we are not active then of course uh, uh, this our democracy cannot be termed vibrant and uh, social media nowadays uh, plays a very big role uh, we know fake news and things like that now you also know this thing this preference uh, falsification and things like that so these things uh, do take place uh, and uh, it is the duty of a media organization to ensure that uh, things that are being catered on social media as well as uh, on their platform are, uh, are not uh, packed with views right they are just news 
and uh, this will happen only when we are active with this uh, let's uh, jump on to the news item very quickly ministry of uh, environment has been instructed by the supreme court to come out with environment plan within two weeks time uh, to take some sort of action through which we can get rid of this uh, pollution air pollution and once uh, it is applied in uh, new delhi then this can be replicated in other parts of the country as well uh, this one is about a very horrific incident that took place in rajasthan uh, police personnel from tamil nadu they went to rajasthan for nabbing or a gang all right or gang of burglars uh, they looted some 3.5 kg of jewelry in um, kolathur uh, but uh, um, they have uh, this uh, a policeman aged 47 he was killed police inspector was killed can you imagine uh, this people they used his own gun and uh, fired in his chest and he's no more with us um, i do uh, my salute goes to uh, to the departed soul as well as his family because uh, remember this gentleman he has sacrificed his life in protecting us uh, us as citizens so we have this good examples of police as well with this uh, indo pacific compact we know india japan and australia right uh, they had uh, their discussion with each other and they have decided to collaborate in this indo pacific region i have uh, discussed uh, this thing yesterday we you were been provided with maps as well so we no point of repeating the things regarding aadhar card the deadline is extended till march 31 2018 you know that if you don't uh, uh, submit or if you don't uh, link your card with your bank aadhar card with your aadhar and pan with your bank then um, beg your pardon your aadhar your pan card with aadhar as well as your bank account with aadhar if you don't do that then uh, it will be freezed until you submit it uh, Aadhar petition is uh, going to mean Supreme Court is going to um, start hearing this Aadhar petition from today. Pakistan files counter in ICJ. It rejects India's stance. Uh, right, ICJ International Court of Justice special video lecture available on it. Uh, if you want, please check it out. Regarding Doklam, India and China has uh, said that uh, it uh, put severe pressure on bilateral ties, but both agree on one thing that uh, things should be peaceful and uh, tranquil. Uh, schemes for women this is a bit interesting here that bpo business process outsourcing schemes uh, the rules and regulations will be changed in such a way so that uh, the housing housewives right they can work from their home and uh, you know that when housewife works uh, she invests in generally speaking in the betterment of uh, her kids and th in this way it will be a big contribution in nation building as well and uh, wto peace clause very important item here what peace clause is all about see developing countries like india are uh, being protected by by this peace clause so developed countries cannot drag us uh, into this dispute settlement mechanism uh, for breaching this 10 percent ceiling now the 10 percent ceiling you know agriculture agreement on agriculture we were talking about this food security thing and the subsidy that is provided by the government of india to the farmers uh, so 10 percent of uh, subsidy is allowed if you cross this 10 percent then that is not right but this 10 percent was decided way back in 1990s somewhere around in 1990s or late 80s so uh, you can imagine this 10 percent we have already crossed it isn't it uh, at that point of time it would be 10 rupees but now 10 rupees has no value at all just a small example here so uh, this is a peace clause th that protects uh, countries like developing nations like India uh, until this permanent solution about a particular matter is not sorted out at WTO. With this, uh, these are your answers. Uh, 26 January and uh, Montford reforms the person in picture uh, was or is, as you can see on your screen, Prime Minister of Australia, Malcolm Turnbull. And today's questions, very quickly, Sheikh Nizamuddin Olia. Today I have two Sufi questions for you. You find this sort of questions in MCQ, so I have uh, included them here. Sheikh Nizamuddin Olia was uh, the disciple of Sheikh Alauddin Sabir, Khwaja Moinuddin Chisti, Baba Farid, or D. Sheikh uh, Ahmad Sirhind. Uh, Ahmad Sir Hindi. Second question is uh, Sufi Saint Khwaja Moinuddin Chisti came to Rajasthan during the reign of 
महाराणा प्रताप राणा संगा राणा खुम्बा राणा कुंभा और डी पृथ्वीराज चौहान एंड दर्ड वन इज आइडेंटिफाई द पर्सन दैट यू कैन सी ऑन योर स्क्रीन विद दिस डियर फ्रेंड्स डोंट फॉरगेट टू मेक द मोस्ट आउट ऑफ दिस फोर्टी परसेंट अप टू फोर्टी परसेंट डिस्काउंट लास्ट डे टूडे आई विल शेयर दिस फाइल ऑन माय फेसबुक पेज प्रशांति मावनी इज द फेसबुक पेज एंड डू गिव अस योर लाइक एंड सब्सक्राइब टू आवर चैनल जय हिंद